Welcome back everyone. Here we are in a brand new Blender project, blank scene, blank canvas, ready to go. So again, I am going to cover the entire image. We're going to start with the robot here, and this is going to be broken up into multiple parts so we can make it uh, a little bit more uh, not so lengthy, right? So I'll try to make this as simple and quick as I can, and let's get started. So the way I started this particular model is with a quad sphere. Now I'm hitting Shift A, going into my add menu, going quad sphere. If you don't have quad sphere because you're not using the add-ons, um, you can use a UV sphere, that's fine. You can also make a quad sphere by using a cube with a sub D modifier and a cast modifier, but I'm not gonna go through on exactly how to do that, but you can create a quad sphere that way if you want. However, you can just use a UV sphere and you'll most likely be fine. You'll have the exact same um, process for the most part. For those of you who don't know what a quad sphere is, this is a quad sphere. It's a sphere made of quads, exactly as it sounds. Okay, so I want to go into vertex mode first. I'm going to hit Alt-Z to enter x-ray mode. You can also just hit the little icon up here if you don't have that ability. And I want to select all the bottom half vertices, Control x and get rid of them, like so. Let's get out of wireframe mode here. I'm going to sharpen this. So for those of you who aren't using hard ops, what sharpen is going to do is it's going to auto smooth and add a sharpened edge. In this case, just a sharpened edge, not a not a B weight to um, that bottom edge there. Okay, and there's the top of the noggin for this robot. I'm going to grab this face now, and I'm going to uh, I think I'm going to yeah I'm going to extrude it down, not just pull it down. Say somewhere about here. I think that works. I'm going to recalculate my sharp. Okay, so that's pretty much why, why didn't it recalculate that's pretty much the um, the shape that I want there we go um, now let's quickly drop some eyes in there so for eyes we're gonna shift a we're just gonna add a cylinder although I just realized something okay cool um, let's grab our cylinder let's just go ahead and rotate that on X Let's bring it out on the Y, and it's not, yep, it's not the cylinder I need. Okay. We're going to add a cylinder, but this time with 100 faces. Because I'm not using a sub-D workflow, I'm not going to be adding geometry um, the way a sub-D would. I want to just start with as much geometry as I need um, to make this smooth. It's 100 is kind of my go-to. Uh, it really depends on how close the object is to the camera. Now for this robot, I didn't use circular eyes. They're kind of an oval. So I just bring it in here a little bit. And now I'm just going to position them. I'm going to turn on my wire. Oops. Turn on my wireframe so I can just see where everything is. And I'm just going to position this somewhere. Here. I think it's a little bit big. Now this is just completely arbitrary. I'm just finding a place and a size that works for me and my particular objective at that time. That's all. There's really nothing else to it. Okay, I'm going to mirror this over. Switch this cursor, switch this to modifier, and then there we go. There are my eyes. Let's look at it. Cool. Let's bring that back a little. It doesn't need to be that far. Okay. All right, that's where I want the eyes to be. And then I know I'm going to have a little antenna base. I'm going to go back into add, back into quad sphere, bring this up. And again, I'm eyeballing this. Um, there's no set like size that I need it to be. I'm just looking at seeing what I like. I'm going to turn off my wireframe for a moment. Cool. Now I use a couple of key commands you guys are going to see over and over and over again. Shift S. Shift S allows me to move my cursor somewhere or move my object to the cursor. I use these all the time. I use Shift S1 for world origin, Shift S2 for cursor to select it, and Shift S8. I apologize for the helicopter flying over. It's probably the ghetto bird. And I use Shift 8, which will move my origin of an object to my cursor, or the, it will move the whole object, not just the origin. But you're going to see I use this constantly. Shift S2 to put the cursor there. Add a cylinder. Quickly sharpen this, smooth it, and I'm going to scale this down to something about. Yeah, I think that, that works. 
oops, and set rotation scale, oops, didn't mean to hide that, I always hit the wrong key, I meant to hit G, okay, I'm just going to apply rotation and scale to the rest of these just so I don't get side swiped later, okay, so that's basically the block out of my robot's head. Now, in this particular robot, I did add a chamfer to this bottom edge. So I'll do that now because that's going to change the proportion of the head. And I want to see how the eyes work with that. And I like that. Just double check my wireframe, make sure everything is positioned where I want it. Cool. And yeah, OK. So before I Boolean this, there's a couple things that I want to do. I see people all the time in the groups talk about how their booleans look like crap and they screw up their image and likely, you know, they, 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 you know, they're not sure what happened. And people always comment and go, never use booleans, booleans suck, and blah, 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 blah. And that's not true, guys. The booleans are used all the time. The trick is knowing how to work with them and how to clean them up and how to basically start with mesh that is conducive to working with booleans. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's better than quads um, or quads are better than you know, n-gons or booleans, whatever. They each have their pros and cons. And don't be fooled, an all-quad workflow can, in fact, and will produce shading errors. It happens all the time. I produced this exact model using an all-quad sub-D workflow, and I still had shading issues that I needed to address. So it's to each their own, but there are, knowing how to work with it will actually help. So if I look at my wireframe here, you can see I have no perpendicular loops that go across this part of the head. If I were to Boolean this now, in fact, I'm just going to do that to show you. I'm going to select the eyes, select the head. I'm going to control minus um, to create a subtraction Boolean. You could do that in Bool tool or anything else. And I'm going to hide these. Now you can see what it did here. You can see all this craziness, right? OK, cool. We agree. That's craziness. I'm going to go back into my mesh here, and I'm going to add a bunch of loops and what I'm looking for here is to add loops to make squares right that's what I want to do and that's what I've done I want this to be as even as I can squares right so now look at that there's still shading issues but they're more confined now to the eye and not going up and down the length of the head of the robot okay so just that's a much better starting point if I look at it like this now Right, you can see and there's a couple things that I can address right off the bat. So I can see that this edge here is pretty close. So um, if I go into my, my hard ops ever scroll, grab this cutter, and just move this down a little bit just to give it a little bit of space between this edge here, this edge here. Um, that might help me out a little bit as well. Okay, now to clean this up, I have to commit it, right? I can't work with the Boolean. If I go into edit mode here, um, let me just go back and hide those cutters. OK, so if I go into edit mode here, you can see. See, my Booleans have not been committed. But before I commit anything, there's a couple things I want to do. First, I'm going to select all of my faces. And I'm going to use Mesh Machine. It's an amazing add-on, really not expensive. I use it every single day in every single project. I really can't work without it. Um, I'm going to go into, I'm going to hit Y, go into my Mesh Machine menu, and I'm going to go to this little thing called Stash It. And what that did is it created essentially a copy. It doesn't live here in my collection. But if I go into my machine um, side panel, you can see it. There it is, right there. So if I turn my wireframe off and I turn this on and off, you can see what it's, what it's done. It's essentially just created a copy of this mesh. It just lives in the ether. right? You're not going to see it here. Now, this is going to come back to help us later. I'm just going to hit Command S, or sorry, Control S. I'm on a PC now because, you know, it's Blender. Make sure you're saving your work often, guys. Blender likes to crash. So now that I've got that, I can go ahead and I can commit this. And you can commit it however you need to. You can go into your uh, modifier panel and just apply. I set up a quick favorite in my hard ops menu for Smart Apply. And there it is, right? Now I've, I'm working with a committed um, Boolean, right? So there's a couple things I need to do now. Obviously, as you can probably expect, there's going to be a bit of a situation here. There's going to be overlap. There's going to be double vertices. There's going to be vertices that don't connect properly. It's going to be a bit of a situation. OK, 
okay? Now you could go through and you can manually correct this, right? What I do is I always favor the curve. So I'm gonna favor the I, and I can connect vertices and merge vertices and do that one by one as I get through the entire I for both eyes. Or what I'm gonna do is go back to my trusty add-on here. I'm gonna select the edge, go into vertex mode, Y, Boolean cleanup, and I don't want to do it that way, so I'm just going to rotate my your mouse wheel, or in my case, the wheel, the, the scroll, the scroll knobby thing on my tablet, and look what it's doing. If I scroll back the other way, you see those red vertices? When I scroll back, you can see it's connecting pretty much all the vertices that are, con are close to other vertices, right? And it just did all that for me that quickly. It didn't do every single one, and it is going to be a little bit cl of cleanup involved, but that just saved me probably 20 minutes worth of work, you know, just doing that, okay? Now, before I do anything else, I'm gonna go back into my edge mode, go back into my trusty Y mesh machine menu, and I'm gonna do an offset. I'm gonna do a little bit of an offset right here. And what I'm doing with this offset is I'm taking the pole, there's gonna be several poles here, and I'm taking it off of the edge that's gonna be beveled, that's the same type of idea in a sub-D workflow too. You don't want poles on your curved edges. In this case, I'm gonna use Shift-1, um, which is a key command in an add-on. It's like Mesh Machine, or even Machine Tools, I think, actually. Um, for you guys, if you're not using those add-ons, what you would do is you select Vertice 1, Vertice 2, and you hit M, Last, okay? And I'm just gonna go through here and do all of these. And I'm gonna speed this part up so you're not, I'm not wasting your time. Okay, now that that's done, I'm gonna go back through here and just remove all of these edges that I don't need anymore and that are just gonna cause me headaches. I'm gonna get rid of them, all the ones that I can see. Hopefully I got all of them. Okay, and there we go. So yes, are there end gons here? 100%, there absolutely is, but they're not a problem. What I did is I made a clean edge for this edge that's gonna bevel and if I were to apply a bevel modifier to this, say something like this, I'm just gonna go in and change the profile here. I'm gonna add another segment. You can see this is the side I didn't clean up. This is the side I did. And the bevel's clean. There's no issues. There's issues around it, sure, because of the end gons on the curved you know, cylindrical surface, etc. But the bevel itself is clean. And we're gonna deal with this a different way. So I'm gonna quickly, I'm gonna turn on wireframe so you can see it. I'm just gonna use hard ops, and I'm gonna switch this to symmetry, and just do that. So now everything on both sides of the eye, or both sides of the head are the same, right? Not bad. Now, in reality, guys, the way I textured this model, if I never addressed these little issues here, you would never see them, right? They are so small. Even if I switch this to a matte cap, a really shiny matte cap, like car paint, right? Now at certain angles you can see it, but I know that the way I texture this, I'm not using a highly reflective material. You would never see that, but we'll address it anyway. So I'll go to something a little bit more easy on the eye. Okay, so here we go. Now I know I'm not gonna use these um, backs of the eyes here, so I'm gonna get rid of those. Now from here, you have a couple of choices. You could use um, a solidify modifier to just create depth in the eye socket. Um, you know, do edge only. Uh, I didn't need geometry on the inside of, the, uh, of this head. You're never gonna see it. So, you know, why add a bunch of extra faces and such? So I had some problems doing that though. I didn't like how, it, you know, the eye wasn't very smooth on the inside. So what I did, and this is what I'll continue to do, is I'll select this inner edge, E for extrude, snap it back with a right mouse click, and then Y, just move it back on Y just a little bit. I'll switch to my top view, and then I'm just gonna move it over on X a little bit, just to do this, and then I'll scale it a little bit, and I'm just arbitrarily moving this to where it looks good to my eyes. Um, go back into object mode, I like that. I like how that looks, it's clean, and I'm just gonna do one of these symmetries again. There we go, I 
probably should have just made this face first, but that's okay. Select this inner edge and just fill it. Now I know it's a huge end gone and that's okay. I could have done a quad um, fill, but that just adds a ton of geometry that I really don't need. Um, Resharpen that, put a sharp edge on the inside if that's where I want. Okay, and there we go. There are our eyes. We are almost done. Okay, now if I wanted to address these little, let me go back to this mat cap here. If I wanted to address these little shading issues here, okay, remember that stash we made earlier? So you could do this in Native Blender by using shrink wrapping. Um, that's essentially what this is doing, but this makes it super easy. So one note that I have found though is that um, what I'm about to do typically does not work well with the bevel modifier. I don't really know why, um, but I found that in like 70 to 80% of cases, it, it causes problems for me. So what I wanna do is I can either manually go in and bevel that stuff, or if I'm happy with the bevel modifier as is, which I am, I don't think it needs any, any more or any less. I like what it's doing here. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna apply the bevel modifier. I can always undo the bevel um, using the add-ons that I'm using. Um, there's some great tools for that, but for now I'm happy with it. Okay, so save because Blender. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna keep it in this matte cap. I'm gonna go into edit mode, press C, and I'm gonna grab, not those, I'm gonna grab all the faces that make up those little shading issues. And I'll speed this little part up so you don't have to sit here and watch me try to select all these faces. Okay, back, selected all of my faces. We can see right out of the gate, we haven't done anything yet, but we can see where all these crazy little shading issues are. So let's do this again. Y, normals, transfer, and you can see instantly that all those are gone. All right, I'm gonna commit this, and there we go. All right, all that crazy stuff we saw up in here is now gone, 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 gone. This looks clean and it was already good enough for the way we're going to texture it but now it's even better now if you wanted to use a reflective um, property in our texture we're good to go all right let's finish up this head and uh, and move on okay so for this part I'll just keep this here actually I'm going to change this mat cup because it drives me nuts okay so for this I'm gonna hide this for a second. Take this, take this, and merge those together. And of course, this is gonna produce a nightmare. Um, but again, expected behavior. Um, we know this, right? All kinds of craziness here. Now, I'm, I already know that I'm comfortable with this placement, so I'm gonna commit this Boolean. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna go in here, select this outer edge. I'm gonna go Y, Boolean cleanup, do the same thing as I did before, and done, right? It's, it's that quick. It's that simple. Everything is now cleaned up. Okay, I'm gonna go back into my edge mode, go back into here, um, do an offset. This time I'm gonna scroll it down, so just like that, just, just a little offset. And again, same idea. I'm just taking the pole or the poles off of the edge we wanna bevel. And I'm gonna take this a little bit further. So I'm gonna take this edge, now you see, it's hard to tell, I don't know if you can see it in the video here, but these are not flat. There's all kinds of little bumps and it's just because of the, the geometry here. So um, I'm gonna do a couple things. One, I'm gonna go into Loop Tools, which is a built-in Blender add-on. You can activate if you haven't and just go circle. And then using Machine Tools, I'm gonna hit Alt-A and I'm gonna align all of them to the bottom. And that's just gonna align them all. So I'm gonna do the same thing here to this inner edge, Loop Tools, Circle, and then Align bottom and all that does is just even those out if I look at this now um, without the wireframe on you can see it doesn't look too bad there's this shadow happening here and the reason that's happening is because of this edge so this one I'll do the same thing just for shits and giggles circle align it and I'm gonna drop this one just a little bit okay so now it's even we're not getting that weird kind of V thing right now I can go in here, I'm gonna select this edge and I'm gonna bevel this manually. Give it like a three or four segment bevel. I think 
there we go that's four segments just like this just whatever feels comfortable done and there it is All right there is our base with a nice little bevel in there it nicely attaches those two elements the geometry is clean there's we're not seeing any issues there okay lastly I'll do I'll unhide this guy I'm going to essentially do the same thing, but this time I'm going to pay more attention to what's going on here, making sure that everything looks like it's in the right place. Okay, cool. Grab this, grab this, do a do a union boolean, and again use whatever means you, you need to. It's that's all it is, just a union um, boolean. And I, again, I don't need to double check anything, so I'm going to apply that boolean so I can then work on it. Come in here, grab this edge, vertex, y. Boolean cleanup, done. That's how fast it is, guys. It's just, that's it, quick, done. And then I'll just go through here, make sure nothing looks weird, cool. Go back into edge mode, Y, offset, drop a little offset in there, just again, to create, get the poles off of the edge. And for shits and giggles, loop tools, circle, oops, wrong key. Alt A, align to bottom, do the same thing here loop tools, where to go, circle, align to bottom. Now if I don't do anything else, take this out of um, uh, wireframe mode, see it already looks pretty good as is, with just the normal smoothing. I have this edge, and I'm just going to bevel the same bevel, just like so, done. Clean, no artifacting, everything looks good, it's, it's merged well, if we look at it in wireframe here. There's no overlap. Everything looks good, All right? And this works for me. And lastly, I'm going to select this edge, bevel this edge manually, and we are done. There is the head of the robot. Now, in other models I've done, you might see I've put ears on them or side antenna, things like that. But I mean, for this model, that's where, that's pretty much where I stopped it. So, um, one final note. When I create these models, pretty much anything I create that I'm eyeballing like this, um, it might look different every single time I do it. Because every single time I do it, I'm working with arbitrary positions and sizes and things like that. And for me, that's okay. If I was working on something that had to be specific, then I would probably work from reference photos or images that are in Blender, um, work with exact sizes if I have them. I have worked at scale before, so I'll switch things to, in my case, Imperial, because that's what I know, and I, I will model to scale if I need to. But for something like this, it's entirely arbitrary. I'm just winging it, um, just doing with what, doing, you know, going with what works best, in my opinion, at that moment in time. So that's all, guys. Here's the head, done, ready to go. I'm gonna stop the video here, um, call it quits on this one, and the next part, we'll go ahead and we'll do the torso um, and the pelvis, and we'll see if we've got enough time, we'll do the limbs. If not, I'll break that apart too, but that'll be in the next video, guys. So hope you learned something in this one. Feel free to ask questions. Hope you see you in the next one. Cheers. Cheers.